So I've gathered some some supplies here. Um, I was going to use these little um, these little switches here to switch on and off the supply to these guys, but I think I've run into my first hitch. I don't know if you'll be able to tell this, but if I line up this hole here with this one here, this guy here does not line up over here. So, so these guys are not standard 0.1 inch header width. I think these guys are. Nope, these guys are not standard 0.1 inch pin spacing. So I really didn't want to do point to point wiring on this because it's a little bit uh, long. But I think I'll have to. I won't really have much of a choice. So yeah, that's a, that's a little bit disappointing. But I guess, I guess I'll have to do some point to point here. So I guess I will heat up the glue gun and get started. See, there's an input output there, and I can solder to the top, so I guess it's not the end of the world. But uh, yeah, I wasn't uh, wasn't expecting to have to do point to point wiring. All right, so let me see if I can figure this out then. I think I've come up with this as a approximate layout. This uh, this could change, obviously, but I think it's going to be something like this. Let me see if this is actually improper. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we have four switches here. Um, each will control their own voltage. So um, as per our design, probably be uh, three volt, uh, three volt, five volt, nine volt, twelve volt. I did. I do think I figured out the twelve volt. So we're gonna see that soon. I can move these switches a little bit further down. I may move them a few, a few holes down, just so I have some space up top to work on input. Um, the output will be these terminals. I'm able to, to fit um, four. This is not secured, so this, this is just for to show you what I'm doing. So I fit four pairs here, so positive, negative, positive, negative on each. They'll have to be labeled. I think this will do, this will be well. This will work perfectly for a functional prototype. And, and then I can sort of finalize this use it, see what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I believe the final product will be in a 3D printed case and on a custom made PCB. And I'm not sponsored by JLC PCB or anything, so you know it may not be from JLC. We'll see what happens. Either way, you're coming along with me. So let me just set this up for soldering. I'm going to solder this up just so that the switches don't move and the output terminals don't move. We're going to set up these um, these guys here and I'll show you how I dealt with the 12 volt problem. All set up to solder my basic components. I don't know how well you can see but there's the pins for the uh, output terminals and here are the pins for the switches. I did move the switches down a little bit. I tried to bend the pins of the switches but it didn't really work like this guy here. I tried to for mechanical holding but it didn't work so um, basically I'm relying on uh, sticky tack this like poster board sticky stuff to hold this all in place while I solder it so I'm gonna be gentle here this is kind of propped up precariously also you got to be careful because these uh, switches or these uh, sorry this vero board I should say when it heats up uh, the pads tend to lift if you you know, if you want to do a little bit better job, you, you can get the um, the Vero board on the green PCB, and that's a little bit more stable. But uh, I figured I was going to be doing down and dirty prototyping when I ordered these. This was before I had the idea of doing a YouTube channel, so it was just supposed to be between me and the girls I go out with. So it doesn't you know, it doesn't lend itself to proper breadboarding very well or uh, prototyping very well. So, um, yeah, no one was supposed to see this unprofessionalism. But it's too late now. I got them, so I'm going to use them. I've lifted many pads from these guys. But as you'll see, there's ways to fix it. I feel like my iron's running a bit cold. It's on 360 degrees, but doesn't seem to be 
doing very well. Okay, so um, how these guys work is when you flip the switch upwards, the two, the the upper and the middle pin are linked. When you flip the switch downwards, the um, lower and the middle pin are linked. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ignore the um, bottom pin because I want it to be on when it's switched up. So yeah, it's just there for mechanical holding for the uh, prodigal 200 pound gorilla. Oops. I don't know how much of this you can see, so I'm not sure how entertaining this is. Okay, so um, since up will be linked to the input, I'm just going to put a little bit of solder there. Kind of link these two together. There we go, make a little solder blob. I prefer this to point to point wiring. rather fill in some holes in some barrel board than put a wire link across because you gotta hold the wire down and if you want the solder to stay there you just leave the you just leave the actual um, solder in there pull your pull your iron away there we go, makes a nice little blob okay so that's good um, I do need to come down this side, so this side will be for the 12 volts, I believe. Nope, this side will be for the 12 volts. So I can take all this stuff off. There we go, it got a little hot. Switches are uneven, but that's okay. Pull this guy off too. Oh yeah, it got very hot. It's just rejuvenating my sticky tack, really. Okay. Mechanically, they still work. Yeah. I might want to put a dab of super glue down on the bottom there to hold these in place, but that is basically a job well done. So, let me just show you what I mean by I solved the 12 volt problem. So, how did I solve the 12 volt mystery? Well, if you look here, I can output uh, 24 volts on these terminals here. Put my multimeter into DC volts okay so this will be 24 volts I hope am I missing something here? shouldn't that be 24 volts between here and here? yeah okay I guess I was lifting off so yeah 24 volts 23 point something if I prop this up so you guys can even see There we go, 23 point something. Over here, the input terminals, now I am using this barrel jack, but if I plug in like so, it looks like it's passing through directly to the input terminals. So the input terminals are in parallel with this barrel jack, so I can just thieve some voltage right from there. So there's still a switch here, which I can turn on and off, but the 12 volts will come directly from um, the input here. So as long as I keep a 12 volt input, you know, I can maybe upgrade this guy. I probably have some more 12 volt uh, switch mode power supplies like this. As long as I keep this input 12 volt, then I can actually thieve the voltage from there and I can put alligator clips onto here, like big thick ones, and actually run this off a car battery in the field. So this not only solves my 12 volt problem, saves me a few components, but also makes it so that this thing will be portable. So that mystery is solved. I did a couple little things. I colored the negative on every terminal. I added an input terminal, but now I have to do some wiring. So I have to wire the input to all these switches. This switch here will be the 12 volt. So uh, the negative here needs to go all the way to the negative here 
and the positive uh, here needs to go to the top of all each of these four things. I have this really inexpensive single core wire which I could use. I also have some silicone wire. I'm not sure which I would prefer to use but um, where I got this single core is actually from this is a, a telephone wire that my old man gave me. He wasn't using it. I don't know why he had it in the first place but um, you know parents right they always have all sorts of stuff laying around and I guess that's where I get my hoarding tendencies I guess so yeah you just cut the sheath off this and this makes great breadboarding wire actually and there you go got a bunch of colors right you just strip this all the way back and then nice single core wire could use that or I could use my silicone wire I might be tempted to use my silicone wire but it's like 30 gauge it's very small I don't know what gauge this is to be fair um, doesn't say CSA type FTA 22 22 gauge rather than 30 gauge yeah maybe I go I don't know I'll probably use this is just a prototype maybe I'll use a silicone wire so let me get set up to solder and see you back there.